You are welcome to our program called This Is My Story and in Chi Masemani. By God's grace, we are fortunate today to have uh, one man of God who is spiritually filled and have so much to share with us. So briefly, we'll go to our guest and then start our discussion uh, with him. Our guest today is Pastor Dr. Quinin Boache. Pastor happens to be the president of the Northern Ghana Union Mission. Pastor Emma Kwaba. Thank you very much, Mr. Akresi. I'm very grateful to have you. Yeah. Um, Pastor, um, before we begin our discussion, we want you to start with an opening prayer. Shall we bow for prayer? Mighty God, we want to thank you for our lives. We are very grateful unto you that you are our creator and our redeemer. We have come for to share many good things that you have done in our lives. Therefore, be present with us and through the power of the Holy Spirit, bless us so we can share the wonder of your grace unto all of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 If you are now watching, our guest for today is Pastor Queen Mbwache, who happens to be the president of the Northern Ghana Union Mission. Um, Pastor, you want a brief background about yourself? As you have mentioned, my name is Kwame Kwenin Mbwache. I hail from Aguna in Asante region. I, uh, my background is uh, farming. My father was the chief of Agona, the former and the late chief of Agona, Nana Yadombwachi the second. So in this way, my life began in the palace. And I never thought I would become a Christian. And of course, Seventh-day Adventist Christian. But God, in his own miraculous way, has brought me thus far. So I'm very grateful and much thankful to what the Lord has done in my life. So Pastor, share with us, how did you become a Christian? Yes, like I mentioned earlier on, Mr. Gracie, I spent my time all in the palace, specifically in a hidden place. You know the context of Akan culture when somebody is coming from the background of the palace. It means I know every facet of hedonism. And little girls, the way to treat them, and a lot of things because even my food will have to be offered to God uh, before I can enjoy. And I enjoyed it much better. So I was deeply involved in hedonistic lifestyle. My father, I need to treat him nicely and then also accord him with the necessary respect. I mean, my father was very respectable and noble king under his ambit are uh, seven towns. So he, he was a paramount chief, a big man, uh, of course. So I needed to listen to him, but he loved me and uh, taking good care of all of us. And let me say, uh, the marriage, my father' marriage, was a polygamous one. In early 1970s, he had 10 wives. In fact, as, at, as coming to twilight of his death, uh, it remained five of them who were faithful to him. So fancy the number of siblings that I will have. 
we were about 41 mm -hmm. children living in a very big, magnificent palace in Agona. I will say that at that time, the palace was one of the largest one in the whole Asante region. Okay. A nice facility, having estates. So these wives, everybody had his own estate. Two rooms, bathroom, and kitchen to herself and the children. So that is how Agona Palace was. And that is the background I was coming from, hedonistic background, enjoying all the lifestyle in the palace, taking care of my father, and becoming a servant. We will say at that time, Ahenkwa. So we enjoyed life. And I used to put on cloth, not this suit like you, uh, I'm doing now. So the life was very, very nice over there. Now, coming back to how I became a Christian. God so good. My father was much interested in education. So the 41 children that he had, everybody was given the opportunity to go to school. It wasn't like he was not taking care of them. Everybody had the golden opportunity to go to school. I chanced to also pass my common entrance, and then I entered uh, Aguna SD Secondary School in 1976, when I was in middle school form two at that time. So I went to the school all right. In fact, I was one of the I was counted among the one of the best students over there. I studied very hard. But in Form 2, something happened. Uh, the pastor who came to take us in the religious affairs, he gave us a memo, a small book, where in which he wrote that he is expecting every of his students to read the book Steps to Christ. Try and read, he encouraged us and come. That pastor was Dr. Brown, Jeffrey Brown. Now he's one of the associates of the General Conference Ministerial Team. He came there from New Bold College, taking that Bible class. So one holiday, I decided to look at what this pastor is saying. So uh, I took the book, Steps to Christ. My father had a lot of Seventh-day Adventist book, Daniel and Revelation, because he was attending most of their occasions. Many of the things that they will be doing, he will be invited and then as they invite, invited him, he was given those books. So I saw these steps to Christ amongst many books packed in front of my father's bed. I said, ah, it's not the book that this pastor told us to read. Let me look at it. I began reading the book, Steps to Christ. After reading, in fact, it was my quest to build on my vocabulary. I didn't want to read so that I can find what I found in the book. But I was thinking, oh, let me look at it. It can build upon my vocabulary, and then it will help me. But as I started reading two pages, three pages, four pages, in there, I began weeping. I didn't know what is happening to me. Oh, I realized that I was weeping. I felt very bad. I felt a very nice situation. Or oh, to realize that you have done a no sin. Look at this God. Look at this God. So the whispering, oh Lord, forgive me. Eradi fam bonichem, eradi fam bonichem. In fact, that was how, what I was saying all along. And then reading along, weeping, crying, 
and later put the book aside. So I became very, very sober by then. I wiped away my tears and then behaved as if nothing had happened to me. So when school reopened, normally in November, we conduct week of prayer. So in what I was saying is, 1978, 1978, they're about preparing ourselves so we can be in the next class. And Pastor Pike Asare came there to conduct that week of prayer. He had then returned from Ashwa. So he came there handling this week of prayer, so powerful. He made an altar call. What I realized that I was before the throne. Mm. The altar call, I was among the students who were preparing for baptism. I accepted Jesus Christ by then. So my friend called me. Ah, what's it? Are you sure you, you are not faking? I said, no. I'm sure I'm giving myself to Christ. I know what I'm doing. But nobody thought I'll be able to come out as a Christian. And by the grace of God, I was baptized by Pastor S.A. Amfo. That time he was the DC pastor at Agona when that great uh, week of prayer was done by Pastor P.K. Asare. And by the grace of God, I became a Christian. It wasn't easy for me mm. at all, but God built my faith okay. in him. Probably the subsequent one, I'll be able to tell you a lot. Okay, okay, Pastor, um, we are grateful. Pastor, let, let's look how, or let's say, um, when did you finally decide to serve God or to become a minister? It's also another story. Uh, by the grace of God, like I said, I got opportunity after my O levels. I gained admission to Prempe College to do my A levels. Got so good, I completed in 1983. But my ambition to, is to become a mathematician, mm -hmm. of probably a medical officer also. So I was looking at these two opportunities that may come my way. But unfortunately, my A-levels, I got all E's. And I decided to better them so that I'll be able to get admission into university. After 1983, then what can I do? After my national service, I decided that uh, I need to get something doing in order to get money to better my uh, A-level courses. My background is also uh, science. I did science. But I got a chance to teach at Amakum APS. Adventist Preparatory School. Today, MABD Akon Adventist Preparatory School. I was a teacher there. I taught for a while, but in my class, I was teaching the youngsters over there. I think the class was P3. There was a nice lady, Mama Alice Eduse, late Alice Eduse. He was taking the children on Another work. But I happened to teach one of her grandchildren at her. So he used to come to my class. The way I was handling the children, one time he called me, uh, Mr. Abwachi, won't you go and upgrade yourself to become? a teacher, or even if you don't want it, 
I normally hear from Amakom mm. Church that they are looking for people for Adventist Missionary College, AMC, that time. So, ah, what did this lady uh, telling me? Because I'm preparing myself to go to uh, KNUST. Mm. I want to become a big time mathematician or a medical doctor. Okay. In fact, the woman came not only once, second time he came, she came. And third time she also came. And this time around, she came with a special permission that Ms. Abuachi, I'm telling you today, you need to go to Kwadaso and see them. It's around 1987 getting to the closing year, 1987. So she came that, uh, I want to tell you, go to Kwadaso because I heard the announcement that they are in need of students for Adventist Missionary College. So we need to go. I said, no, no, no. This lady is troubling me. I uh, haven't decided to go to any uh, missionary college. I don't want to become a pastor, not at all. But she came again, this time on me, mm -hmm. that he showed me the car mm -hmm. that is going to the place. In fact, APS, we had a car taking all the students mm -hmm. and then uh, putting them in their various destinations. Okay. 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 Yeah, Mrs. late Mrs. Uh, Alice Duse, okay. she was pressing me to become a pastor. Mm -hmm that I need to go and pick a form at Kwadaso, Central Ghana Conference, uh, to be specific, okay. and then go to Adventist Missionary College. So he showed me a car that was standing there waiting for me. So I needed to board a car mm -hmm. and go to Kwadaso. So to satisfy the curiosity of this lady, mm -hmm. I boarded the car mm -hmm. and went there. Lo and behold, I saw Pastor Oke Kuma. Okay. And I told him, uh, like what the woman has told me, that, Pastor, I have come that I'll be able to have uh, Adventist Missionary College form mm -hmm. and prepare myself to go to the college. He said, oh, fine. Then there is a form. This is the form. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if you chance to get admission, the Central Ghana Conference will be able to do something to support you. Mm -hmm. Say, well, Okay, so I picked the form, filled the form, came back to this lady, said, well, then you can go to Accra. Mm. Straight away, the next day, I went to Accra. I saw Pastor Sunstead at Adenta. That time, that is where the school was located. Mm. It wasn't at the present OEP. So I handed the form. Then immediately, Pastor Sunstead told me that, oh, you have been admitted. He gave me the admission letter and brought it back to Central Ghana Conference. And they gave me the initial money, the little money that I, I will get. I packed my things. Uh, in fact, there was a joy in me that I need to leave the school. So in January, mm -hmm. that time you were dealing with quarter system. Okay. So in January, I packed my things then to Accra. Mm -hmm. By the grace of God, through conversing, okay. I am a very good conversant. By the grace of God, I finished the two-year program. Mm -hmm. I had, after conversing in Accra, I got opportunity to converse in Sweden. Mm -hmm. So, in returning from Sweden, I went to Aswa. And by the grace of God, I have become a full-fledged pastor in 1992. Okay. I completed my course in uh, Aswa, the then uh, today's Bangkok University. Okay. Okay, that is how my ministry started. Okay, Pastor, we are grateful. Um, now, now you are a pastor. We want to look at your life story, how God has impacted you, 
and what you would, with your experience, what you can tell our friends who are watching us right now? Yeah, by the grace of God, in fact, in 1989, that also began my marital car uh, journey. Uh, the lady I'm now with, Mrs. Diana Kwenimboachi, she was my junior in uh, secondary school. And I was uh, a youth director, let me see, AYS leader that time. In fact, we used to pack tables and chairs. I told all the students to do the packing. But unfortunately, none of them came up to do, except this my wife and her brother. They are twins. So I was looking afar. I said, ah, this lady, if I'm chance to get to any nice place, I need to come back to her and marry her. So by the grace of God, in 1990, okay. I got married to this dear lady that I have. We started the journey together. However, I haven't completed Aswa, okay. but we understood ourselves because she was a teacher. Mm -hmm. So we started the ministry in 1992. When uh, I got into the ministry. In fact, Pastor I.B. Boatin had conducted evangelistic activity in uh, Sefibe Kwai. And then they to assign me to the place to nurture the church members over there. I spent about almost one year there at Sefibe Kwai, going through other towns in Sarah and other places to nurture the churches over there. Uh, that time, Pastor uh, Augustine was the DC pastor. So I worked with him. And then he assigned me some of the churches over there. And then we worked together, visiting places. So from there, in 1993, uh, by the grace of God, they employed me fully into the ministry because I spent one year uh, receiving a little stipend. Uh, I wasn't fully employed by then. So I was working for the church for one full year with a living on the stipend. In 1993, February, I was fully employed. They sent me to Ejiso. Pastor Donko had gone to Aswa by then. Mm -hmm. So I went there to replace him, taking charge of a Jesuit district. I opened a church in Horeso. Okay. I started my evangelism campaign over there, and the church was open over there. We even secured some parcel of land over there. Mm -hmm. From a Jesuit, when Pastor Donko returned from Aswa, he was doing his masses over there they transferred me to Obuasi mm -hmm. to work under Pastor S.K. Yeboah, okay. the late Pastor S.K. Yeboah. I spent about two years at Obuasi working over there. So later they transferred me to Akumada to become a district pastor in 1995. So I had a nice time over there. For most of the churches over there, I established, I opened. Amponsa Krum, Krofwa, and many other places over there. Shushu, Ankasi. We did a lot in Akumadain. And in 1999, I was transferred to uh, Ahinsai. That time, um, Amokum District was organized into two. Mm -hmm. Pastor Adakwa handling one, and then they gave me a Hinsan District. But let me tell you what happened to me at Akumadai. In fact, at Akumadai, uh, I chose to uh, 
get admission again to Norway for canvassing. I had started my second degree, Masters in Religion, in Bangkok University. That time it was Andrews that was organizing this extension campus <clears throat> program for some of us. So I got that opportunity studying, furthering my education, doing my masters. But I was not given any support, financial assistance from the conference. Akuma Dime by then had gone to uh, Midwest Ghana conference. Mm -hmm. So uh, I decided to go to the Norway and do the canvas in order to get money to support this one. On returning from Norway, I had a letter that I had been sacked from the ministry. Said, ah, no, how can you people do that? Because even if anybody is in trouble mm -hmm. in the ministry, you need to do canvassing to save your situation. Mm -hmm. And I was in the same critical situation, mm -hmm. finding money to be able to support myself in this ME program that I was doing. So they sacked me. Say, ah. In fact, it was a real struggle. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do. But later, late Pastor Dujemfi oh, okay. called me that Pastor come. He sat me down, talked to me that you reapply. I said, ah, but I was a worker doing my things all right. He said, no, uh, you need to reapply. In fact, he talked to me, calming him down. And as I listened to him, I realized a powerful lessons. Mm. That, Pastor, can you share some of the lessons with us? Yeah, in ministry, mm. you are not going to find it easy. Okay. Even those that you think they are around you, your real ministers mm. are going to be your some of your enemies. Mm. Satan can use other pastors to frustrate you. Mm. So this man encouraged me that we know, you know, I know where the Lord will lead you. So calm down, humble yourself, and reapply for them to accept you. If you leave the ministry, uh, your life will be horrible. Say, ah, pastor, I have decided to go away. Mm. So he sat me down and talked to me, talked to me, citing many examples and many challenges that he had faced in his life. So I reapplied, giving it to Pastor, that time the officers were Pastor Apia Kubi, Pastor Jiki Bedu, and Pastor Adim Nunkum. I gave it back to them. And then they sat me and interviewed me. Somebody who has done the ministry for almost five years. Mm -hmm. and now I look as if I'm even beginning my life. But I agree. Okay and come back once again. Started by the grace of God, as I received the transfer to Ahensai, mm -hmm. it was a great lesson to me mm -hmm. that I need to be very careful. In fact, as you work with other ministers, we, we need to be very careful. One thing that has helped me in the ministry is I'm prayerful. Okay. I, I pray a lot. I also take my Bible studies and the spirit of prophecy seriously. Take my Bible studies and the spirit of prophecy seriously. And I don't uh, bother with even the money that I receive. Even as I sit as union president now, okay. I don't know even my remuneration very well. Okay. Okay. What I'm interested in is evangelism. Mm. In fact, as the year, any year, okay. I need to do something to augment, to refresh myself in the doctrines of the church. If I don't do it, it looks as if something nasty has happened to my life. Mm. I love evangelism. Okay. I love evangelism. I love to preach. Mm. I love to lift, to lift up Jesus Christ all the time. In fact, he has been my all in all.
mm. my all in all. Mm. And I don't care about where you are. Mm. My focus is on Jesus Christ, mm. evangelism, evangelism. Mm. Okay, so Pastor, uh, what motivated you after your master's to pursue to the higher degree? God so good. I got opportunity to become the executive secretary of South Central Ghana Conference. Okay. In 2006, okay. they were looking for a cohort something in Bangkok University, Andrews University. Okay. They want to do something over there so that they can prevent people from moving from Africa mm -hmm. to the United States. Mm. Therefore, if they have cohort system, in leadership to be able to uh, uh, teach us and bring us up so that we can remain over here and work. Now, by the grace of God, I was working with uh, Pastor Israel Nanetu for. He is my mentor. And then South Central will have to send somebody. He told me, Pastor Kwen Mbwache, I'm old now. Mm. In 2008, I will retire. Okay. So you are very youthful. And if I'm not going with the uh, leadership caucus, I think you need to, I need to send your name. In fact, he has been a blessing to me. Amen. Pastor Israel Nanatu Four has been great support in my ministry. In fact, he brought me from Midwest mm -hmm. to South Central. And he also recommended me mm. to become uh, a representative of the church pastor at the general conference executive committee. Wow. Uh -huh. And then he also accepted me to become his secretary. Okay. So he told me, Pastor, I think I need to send your name to take that uh, quota. So he sent my name to the division for me to become part of the cohort in spiritual leadership. Okay. Okay. And by the grace of God, in 2010, mm. I completed to have my uh, doctor of ministry. Mm -hmm. Okay, Pastor, we are grateful. Um, if you are now watching, our guest is Pastor Queenin Boache, who is the president for the Northern Ghana Union Mission. So you can see we are blessed today to have such a special person to share his experience with us. So, Pastor, um, maybe there's someone who is watching us, a youth, who is going through difficulties with your life experience. What can you say to motivate such a person? Yeah, like I said, I was baptized in 1978. Okay. It wasn't easy baptism that I received. You know, my father, I was very close to my father, and I had spent all my time in the palace. So, well, he accepted me to be a Christian, but I needed to take a decision. Because I realized that the food that was even prepared in my home, we used to go to these little gods and sacrifice unto them before I eat. So I decided to become a vegetarian. Mm. It was a very tough time for me. Wow. My father never understood me. Mm. In fact, later when I decided to become a Seventh-day Adventist pastor, mm -hmm. he rejected me. Wow. He said, no, 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 no. Ah, we have uh, uh, big people mm -hmm. like uh, Father Bishop Akwesi Sapon. And wh what is SDA pastor? Mm -hmm. No, no, this, my child is going mad. Mm. He never understood me to become a pastor. Wow. So it was, I spent a lot of my time in Accra. Oh, okay. I never returned to Kumasi mm. when I got the opportunity to enter into AMC oh, okay. because of some of these issues. Mm. So he never even recognized the fact that I'm going to Norway and Sweden for canvas and say, no, 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 LDA pastor, what is he going to become? Mm. But in spite of these challenges, mm -hmm. my father rejecting me, mm -hmm. even 
the conference that I worked sacked me mm -hmm. and all those things. Mm -hmm. I was deeply committed to Christ. Okay. Okay. I love giving okay. and I love people. Okay. I don't know, it's because of I have a very large family okay. with my father and my mother's side. Mm -hmm. So I love people. Okay. I want to be with people. I want to talk and encourage people. I'm an encourager. Okay. So uh, with this background, mm -hmm. God has blessed me a lot. Okay. Let me indicate once again that uh, mighty God has been with me, Amen. encouraging me in spite of all these challenges. Number of times, you see, even fellow colleagues will never understand you in the ministry. Mm -hmm. Begin to understand those things. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's not easy okay. to become a Seventh-day Adventist pastor, mm -hmm. but if you are deeply committed, your God will seal you through. But if you mama, mm -hmm. and then you don't focus on, say, evangelism mm -hmm. and your Bible and your spirit of prophecy, mm -hmm. you dissuade from the path that you have chosen. Okay. And that is why you don't need to entertain people like that, okay. uh, talking, murmuring, complaining. If you do that, it won't help you. Okay. And also, by the grace of God, I haven't looked for positions. Mm -hmm. God is walk, walking me through life just like that. Walking me through life just like that, become this, become that. So if you think that you are going to struggle with me, no, 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 it's impossible. Mm. Because my God is always available to defend me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Pastor, if I'm understanding you, what you want to tell the youth is that they shouldn't give up in their predicament or problem. Yeah, in fact, that is exactly. Don't give up, especially if you have chosen to become a seven-day Adventist Christian. Don't give up. That is the best place for you. This church is prophetic church. I have read a lot in the Bible mm -hmm. and also the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. If you are committed seven-day Adventist, oh, you are unique before God. Mm -hmm. okay. And God will all the time be with you. Okay. Except you don't want to become a committed seven-day Adventist. That is my prayer. Mm -hmm. That Lord give me that great sense of commitment okay. so i be with you mm -hmm. in spite of my weaknesses help me to hold on to you okay. if i do that if you do that there is much of joy waiting for you in christ okay. Okay. so you need to forge ahead in christ and always commit your life unto him and he will bless you amen amen pastor can, can you share your uh, leadership experience now that you are the northern ghana union uh, mission president, can you share some leadership experience that the youth of today who are watching can tap from you? Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tracy. Like I said, I have some mentors. I mentioned Pastor Israel and Four, and other people mm. have been my encouragers, mm. supporting me. As a leader, mm. you need to have somebody that you can go to. That is very, very important. And then, again, you don't need to take your devotions anyhow. I would say soak yourself in the word of God. If you are able to do that, it's going to help you a lot. Don't depend upon what is happening on uh, say, WhatsApp and all those things. No. Find Jesus Christ from the Word of God and the Spirit of Prophecy books. The ministry of LNG White. Cherish it. Uh -huh. So if you commit yourself that way, taking those things serious, God will take you to greater height. God will take you to greater height. And again, uh, giving. Giving. You don't need to lose sight of giving. If you lose sight of giving, especially tithe and offering, okay. I'm not talking as a, a pastor. I don't want to say as a pastor I'm promoting tithe and offering. Okay. Even when I began the church okay. in my early stages, mm -hmm. I never took these things lightly. Okay. I need to give and give the little I have. I need to be faithful. It's very important. Whatever is happening in the church, be part of it. Okay. 
very, very important. Again, let me quickly also mention, you need to leave a legacy. You need to leave a legacy. You know, way marks, something to tell people that I have been here before. Okay. In ministry, establishing churches, mm -hmm. opening schools, okay. putting up church buildings. Mm -hmm. If you leave such that legacy, then the most important of all, mm. impacting the life of the people that you move it. Mm. So I don't joke with relationship. Mm. Very difficult for you to have conflict with me. Mm. Very, very difficult. Okay. Very difficult to have conflict with me. Mm. I, I will never entertain it. You will have, but I will never entertain it. I will pray for you until okay. You, you you lose everything that ah, what is wrong with this guy I'm trying to avoid him but I always be with people mm -hmm. so I'm people oriented okay. I love people I love people Pastor, we, we are grateful um, Pastor, uh, because of our time we want to um, get your last words to our friends and family members and uh, Christians and Adventists who are watching us right now yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Cressy. Let me quickly mention that my last word would be that Christ is coming again. This morning, I cherish that wonderful passage. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 44. That we need to be watchful. We need to be alert that our master will come soon. Seven-day Adventist church is a prophetic church that will triumph very soon christ will welcome us home so the message that the lord has entrusted to us the three angels message is still appropriate for our time i will encourage every youth to accept the challenge i will go let us proclaim that message because when you look at the bible the values of god have been thrown overboard. I'm talking about Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Talk of creation. Talk of marriage. Talk of health reform. Even what is going into our mouth. Talk of worship. And for that matter, Sabbath. These are wonderful values that the Lord has given to us. Now they are all down through them. Mm. Except Seventh-day Adventist Church, which is prophetic church, making loud over some of these things. Mm. So I will encourage every Seventh-day Adventist Christian mm. to accept the challenge, I will go. Okay. Let us vehemently mm. and strongly proclaim this message of hope, the three angels' message in the context of Revelation chapter 14. 6 to 12. Thank you very much. Thank you too. We are much grateful for Pastor's time. And before we end, we we'll go to him for a closing prayer. Then we end. Shall we bow for prayer? Mighty Father in heaven, we are so thankful unto you for giving us this opportunity to share. Thank you so much for building our lives. You have a purpose for our life and a purpose for each and every one of us. Lord, manifest yourself in us through the baptism of the Holy Spirit so we can proclaim the message of hope that Jesus Christ is coming again. Bless the youth, bless the leadership of the church, and bless the entire world in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We thank you so much for watching. And I know you have been inspired by the experience of Pastor Queen Ibuache. This is how far time will allow us to be. God willing, next week we will come on your way. But may the good Lord be with you. May he shine his face upon you. May he be gracious unto you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Shalom.